What is up, guys? This is Luke Hill for Kit Guru. I'm here with virtual Leo for Kit Guru, the best type of Leo, because I don't have to sit next to him. No, I'm kidding. We love Leo. Everybody loves Leo. So we're here. Uh, we've got our new setup. We're trying to bring you a bit more content in these tough times. So if I look over here, it's because I'm looking at my laptop streaming. I'm looking at my camera. I'm looking at Leo's face. It's going to be a bit all over the place, but hopefully you enjoy this content and you let us know what you think in the comment section down below. And I'm just going to chip in here and say, I'm doing this on a Windows 10 laptop with a webcam on top. And I'm using, we're using Skype to talk. And I tried this yesterday with an iPad in Luke in test. And the iPad basically didn't work because Skype on iPad doesn't need to blur the background and that looked fairly frightening. So if anybody has experience of Skype on Windows and Apple and can offer a considered view on the subject, then let us hear your thoughts on it. Because this whole remote uh, meeting conversation thing, it's massive. As we know, there's been loads of talk about Zoom and Zon recently. We all know about that. But uh, Skype, I haven't used Skype in blooming years. And I think I've just remembered why. Um, so <laughs> on, on my laptop, it's, it's okay, you know. But the idea that my iPad, it's not as good. It's like, what's that about? So I don't want an Apple Windows Flame Ward. Not what I'm after. But Genuinely. of course you're going to get one. Come yeah, on. I know, but I don't want it. But this is, this is so we can all kind of move forward. Let's use these terrible human malware times to actually progress a bit and learn something. I agree, because we've taken, what, a day and a half and the 50 gigabytes of failed footage to learn that this type of setup is not as easy as I once thought. If I'm <laughs> All honest. you do is talk to each other and record it. Duh. No, 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 no. And no, I think not as easy as I thought. It's perhaps quite a significant understatement. But it seems to be working now, so I'm going to do my best to not move too much, not touch too much, and just... Just talk. Just talk. And, and also as an observation, we noticed because obviously the lockdown across Europe, across America more so, and definitely in the UK, uh, Kit Guru's traffic is up because, of course, you're at home. You want content. We're here to deliver that content. That's what this is about. So if we can make it quick and easy, oh, yes, we'll go for that as well. <laughs> yeah, so we, we do really extend our thanks to everybody who's doing their bit at this time, whether you know, you're staying at home, staying safe, everybody who's working hard to keep everybody safe. Our thoughts do, do go out to everybody. We're fortunate that we work from home and we, we can stay safe, we can stay isolated, we can continue to deliver you content. So because everybody's at home, everybody needs you know a bit of a distraction, a very light-hearted bit of entertainment with, with the man himself, who is Leo. We thought we'd try and do our bit to bring you a bit more content than we usually do. So hopefully you let us know how this goes down in the comment section down below. So in the first of our lockdown conversations, we're going to touch on Intel, AMD and NVIDIA. Bet you couldn't have predicted that. Okay. What a, what a surprise. Yeah, no. Okay, let's kick it off. Okay, so today is the 3rd of April. Yesterday, 2nd of April, 8 a.m. UK time. We're in British summertime here, or one minute past midnight Pacific. Intel <laughs> and, yeah, and that's significant. Intel and NVIDIA launched their new laptop stuff, announced their new laptop stuff. And I don't honestly know when it's actually going to go on sale, according to a Zeus, like July. So massive lead time. We're talking wow. comment sorry you, you, are you are you agreeing or disagreeing there luke i didn't realize they were that far away i do recall you mentioned well, it was a zoo like, said that wow. yeah a zoo said that i don't know if that applies across the piece or if that's a zoo in particular so okay. i also saw the gs66 stealth from msi which we saw at ces three months ago now which was yes. literally sat there going waiting for processor which was yes. like what's this <laughs> like a lot of the um, laptops at ces actually yeah, and Acer had the same thing going on. Yeah. So the ROG Zephyrus Duo 15, if I've got the name correct, which looked really nifty, uh, but quite expensive, but really nifty, that is not coming anytime soon. Uh, so Comet Lake H from Intel Processor, I have to say my initial impression of it was almost couldn't care less. <laughs> okay. I know. It's um, just why is that? Is that because it's just so similar to ninth gen, as in it's kind of ninth gen plus? And I, I've I've gone for the dreaded plus because I know this is now fourteen plus plus, yeah. plus 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 plus. Correct. Uh, when when we were when we were in on the briefing a couple of days ago, so they've got the updates from the uh, ninth gen, which in turn is eighth gen, which is whatever. So take your six core ninety seven fifty H ten seven fifty H, and even the numbering goes to pieces because you can say as we've said with other. Rangers 9750H. You don't say 9750H unless you're Debauer. Uh, and then the 10 series, it's 10750H. It's like, what, what's, what's that? Uh, 
Yep. And it, it's, it's just horrible mouthful of garbage. Well, 10 and is one more than nine. <laughs> yeah, precisely. But harder to say, because once again, as we've mentioned in the past, if the people at these companies could actually try saying these names out loud once in a while, it'd be appreciated. Um, and just writing it down. I see uh, our out loud spoken test comes back into a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, 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 quite, quite. And if I haven't mentioned recently, AMD Epic is a brilliant name. So going back to the Comet Lake H um, thing, the... Everything below the top skew, the HK, was just like stuff. And I, apart from minor speed bumps, which is like whatever, because the, the speed of a laptop is all down to power and cooling. You can yep. claim anything you like in this world. It doesn't mean a damn thing because it's typically locked down by the manufacturer of the laptop mm -hmm. and it's entirely dependent on the thing. And even if it works, the thing's probably going to sound like a rocket ship taking off. That's so, the challenge in a laptop, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's, it, and it's very serious, very serious technical challenges. So even if Intel was to, say, for but a few more watts, you can have this thing that's brilliant, it's got to be delivered. Yeah. And then they've got the HK. What's the HK, Luke? Well, the HK just seems to be fundamentally the same as the i9-9980 HK. Except now, maximum boost speed goes from watt to watt. Well, it's up to 5.3 gigahertz now, which is lofty. Because, I mean, even from the... <laughs> the yeah, it yeah, it's, I can't quite see you kind of making flailing arm gestures while I'm talking. So. In a laptop. In a, desktop, in a desktop, you don't bloody get that sort of speed. In a desktop, That's boost kind of 5.1 is significant. 5.2. 5.3 boost on a desktop. 5.3. That is a, monumental. Yeah. Now, um, so various people on the call, and I'm, I'm going to name Ian Cutress because they're doing this um, mass briefing, and it was uh, you had to type your questions in a text box. And questions are coming up about things like PL2 and so on. In other words, you know, how much power for how long on how many cores? And they kind of answered. And I have to say, uh, my, I went into a sort of semi-meltdown because it appeared to be either uh, – did they claim 65 watts for, like, the main boost in a lap? So, yeah, so there's a configurable TDP mode, it seems, where you can... Obviously, these are 45-watt parts nominally because they're laptop parts. We know they bump higher kind of towards 100 watts than towards, like, 70 or so watts. It depends for the PL1 and PL2. There is a configurable TDP of 65 watts, like you said, which is down to the laptop vendor, which gives this 65 watts of power headroom, which in theory could be sustained for the higher sustained clocks. But even 65 watts, that's less than something like a Core i9-9900K on the desktop, which oh, can ooh, be configured... Ooh, that's not 100, less than a, an i5. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, I guess... No, no, yeah. no, no we're, we're way off. I, I've just recently, as you know, done, and we will come to this, uh, I've done the Ryzen 4000 in the ROG Zephyrus G14, that's an eight-core processor with uh, external graphics. Uh, they, they've added in um, NVIDIA graphics. Mm -hmm. And the processor itself, eight-core, seven nanometer, was running at 4.1, I think, gigahertz initially. Um, or maybe, no, 3.7, sorry, all core, 3.7 all core on 53 watts. And then it was pulling back to the 35 watt rating, which yep. was varying on, depending on the cooling, about 3.2 gigahertz. So very recently I've seen AMD's brand new Ryzen processor, 53 watts, 3.7 gigahertz, eight cores, or 35 watts, 3.2 gigahertz with cooling or 3.1 gigahertz with the fans on quiet. Intel, with their old technology, eight cores, 5.7 gigahertz on less than, uh, you're talking 100 plus watts to make that work. Yeah, well, the PL, one of the higher PL states is yeah. typically 100 plus watts, depending on the OEM configuration. So which, therefore, you yeah. have to hope to Christ it's going to work for about half a second. Well, this is the thing, it's very short durations there, so some of them like mm. around about the 10 seconds range, which is fine, because you've got the thermal capacitance built into the coolant of the laptop. But... Yeah, claiming that it's eight cores, five point three gigahertz. As we know, that's not really the In case. Fairness, up, up to, but up I to, mean, they're going to be yeah. so wide of the mark. Yeah, but this is the thing, and I, I guess this is perhaps more important with laptop buyers. Is that up to perhaps your typical buyer of a gaming laptop or who goes into carries or PC world doesn't realise what that up to means, like our audience, like we do? Because I know AMD obviously got a lot of stick for their up to boost clocks with Zen two, and justifiably so. But this seems another one of those cases where we're back to this up to, which is miles away from the realistic well, sustained usage. We've previously bashed AMD with the desktop parts where they were yeah. saying the maximum boost of, say, 4.2 gigahertz for one of the models. And in fact, you never quite saw it. You saw, say, 4.15. And you go, well, yeah. why not, say, 4.1 in that case? 
I mean, what's it matter? The difference is truth or not truth. Yeah. And then you get the all core boost and the whatever and whatever. But in this instance, the Intel parts, because uh, the, the base speed on these um, H parts is really low. It's kind of like mid, range, mid two gigahertz base yeah, speed, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. And the range from base to maximum up to is it's double. It's more than double. It's like 100% range, which is absolutely more, more. massive. It's, it's yeah, massive. Yeah. So if they deliver these parts running at 2.8 gigahertz, that's legit. Uh, and how is that anything? Yeah, it's like uh, uh, legit in the sense they're not lying, but mm -hmm. not legit in the sense of anything I want to see. So um, I was, I, I was, I was down on the MSI GS66 Stealth preview. It's an engineering sample. I couldn't benchmark it because I was looking at it, going, "Well, the laptop itself is all right. It's yeah. just what's inside it." Um, yeah. Yeah, and they've got a 240 hertz panel on the MSI and so on, which is you know, fine by me. The 100 but watt hour battery is a cool feature. I really like that. That's, that's a cool on that specific laptop. 99.99 .99 watt hours, Luke. Sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> rounding. <laughs> I didn't actually uh, spell that out in my video. What's the battery in the MSI about? So there's a, I believe it's TSA travel regulation in, obviously TSA is North America. So I think the highest legal battery capacity you can take on a plane is, on an aeroplane, is 100 watt hours or just below 100 watt hours. So even, have you seen those like quite beefy USB power banks you can get? Some of yeah. those are yes. basically like 20,000 milliamp hours and roughly 5 volts or something like that. So even they stay to the same 100 watt hour restrictions. You can get some bigger ones that you could basically only stick in your car. You can't take on a plane. But obviously, if you want to sell to a global audience, well, number one, you've got to ship them typically by air freight. So that, <laughs> yes. that causes challenges because you do need special air freight shipping with big ba lithium batteries. But number two, if someone wants to stick it in a backpack, mm. then, you know, and go on a flight, then... It's not good them getting to the airport and then well, TSA well, saying, saying people. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, as you'd expect, the first comment on these videos typically is my missus and she's watching it back before it actually goes live. And she said, but why, what, what's the battery limit? I said, well, for planes. She goes, oh, well, they can sell it, you know, if it's not going to go on a plane. I said, any laptop that can't go on a plane isn't going to be produced. Yeah, no that would going to produce a laptop and then put on it brackets don't take on plain clothes brackets yeah. and she was saying oh, i'm not so sure you're correct i said i'm fairly sure i'm correct i'm um, like positive that you're correct because mm -hmm. there was the macbook book issue wasn't it? and the samsung which was the one that exploded the galaxy note 7 the one that was modded into grand theft auto yes. the grenade. was it the galaxy note 7 it was wasn't it? Think, note 7. yes yes the one that specifically says um well welcome to our thing if you've got one of these things let us know <laughs> 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 we'll, call we'll, we'll stand close with the extinguisher. <laughs> we'll call the specialist anyway, in to help you. <laughs> let us drag this back on track where it's going to be longer than you choice. Yes. Um, so in addition to Comet Lake H, NVIDIA also announced their super graphics. Now, there's a funny business here. In my Rog Zephyrus Duo video, I mentioned that I wasn't able to go through the product stack because one of the existing graphics chips was under NDA. It, I think that from memory was GTX 1650 Ti which wasn't in the laptops I was looking at. But, um, so wait, have you just broken the NDA there? No, no, not now. Okay. Okay. Um, because it was then. It was this whole weird thing about it. it was just a day or two behind the end. It was just really complicated. But it seems that there's some updated version of, if it is 1650 Ti, it's like, okay, which was totally not super. I mean, it's just not. It's just like, oh, I see, and because of that, therefore, it's like, what is this? And as to whatever the changes are, I still don't know. So I think 1650Ti, it, it is new, isn't it? Because I know the XPS 15, which I use, was a GTX 1650. Oh, you're quite correct. Of course, that's what's new about it. It's new. It's, um, yeah, anyway, it's TI, but, but, but it's still four what, gigs. Which is, but what, they, what they've done is, what NVIDIA has done is, they've basically made their stack ever more granular. So they're saying you can now get, you know, NVIDIA graphics in laptops down to this price here rather than that price there. So $699 and so on. The supers are Super 27, RTX 2070, Super RTX 2080. And I believe they're both Max-Q versions as well. Max-Q is... Uh, yeah, and, and there's still this confusion between Max Q and Max P because it really isn't clear to buyers whether you're getting Max Q or Max P, which is it's quite the difference. It's not clear to reviewers, to be frank. It's not clear um, to anybody. I, I, I've had a number of uh, because sometimes you open GPU Z and you look at GPU Z, GPU Z for our friends over the pond, and it specifically says NVIDIA RTX 2070 Max Q. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Now I had this with. 
the MSI GE65, I think it was quite recently, which is a, now a, a relatively old model, uh, but it's still on sale until probably very soon. Um, and the graphics in there were not identified as Max-Q. However, the performance and the clocks were exactly the same as Max-Q. So I don't know if that means it's Max-Q or not, but effectively it was. Hmm. It's a very okay. curious thing. Um, so uh, NVIDIA RTX 2070 Max-Q is 10% more shaders CUDA cores than the existing 2070. Wait, Max-Q or Super? Do you mean the su Super? Uh, sorry, uh, so thank you very much. The new RTX 2070 Super Max-Q has 10% more CUDA cores than the existing RTX 2070 non-Super, and the 2080 Super has 4% more CUDA cores than the existing 2080. So a change, but nothing massive. And they're also talking about lower power GDDR6 memory, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, fine. So but, I, I, I guess what we said there previously, didn't we, is it seems like they're trading... Uh, clock speed for shader cores because it, it's kind of seems like most likely processes. Seems, because it seems like they pulled down the power so the lower power of the thing is static it looks like the upper power limit um, has either dropped slightly or, or they're implying they're more likely to air towards lower power yeah, so exactly because, same way of getting a way of getting the same performance yeah because um, it takes disproportionately more power to run at higher frequency doesn't it so if you can uh, kind of increase the, the pipe or widen the pipe but reduce the frequency you might get the same performance but slightly lower power basically typically cool. isn't it? it's also worth pointing out that with um, ryzen 4000 the graphics potentially if you've got add-in nvidia graphics ironically on an amd laptop the graphics potentially are sucking double the power of the cpu depending on the scenario I mean, when they're both working hard not when one's idle whereas um, with intel you uh well actually it's a similar thing it can be a two to one graphics to cpu if you but once if the hk spools up then <laughs> the ratio is going to be slightly more cpu than graphics momentarily but it, so that, yeah quite however even under sustained uh loads where you're using both cpu and gpu so more professional rather than gaming uh potentially potentially you're going to see both CPU and GPU each drawing 85 to 100 watts. Yeah, so does this introduce a scenario, especially now with the higher performance super, which you want to sustain the performance of, um, and, the, and the high power Intel H-series part, what is, what is a typical high-end laptop power brick? Is it 180 watts? Varies enormously. The recent power bricks I've seen for non-high-end, i.e. RTX 2060, is 185 watts. But okay. what I saw in the past when I was looking at some monster laptops, I'm thinking back to MSI Titan, well, forget Titan, because that was dual power brick. That was just crazy. Yeah. With laptops such as MSI G65, GL65, and prior to Gigabyte Aero 15, because they seem to be the first to really work at small power bricks. The bricks were typically 230 watts if you had RTX 2070, 330 watts if you had RTX 2080. And I think the same was true of GTX 1070, GTX 1080. That was the differentiator, was 230 watts was kind of everything, and 330 watts was beast. Okay, so we're not going to have any problems with power bricks then because that is don't see it, no in fact the thing you get into in recent times is that people like gigabyte start doing things like adding usb ports to their power bricks um okay. so you could just, uh, charge your phone off them which i thought was a really nifty feature that's a very um, good idea yeah, yeah. I like that. and um uh the um a thing that's changed also in recent times has been the rise of type c charging for laptops so you can plug your uh, phone charger, or indeed the power bank that you mentioned, into your laptop to keep your laptop running. But this is interesting, though, isn't it? Because, again, going mentioned. back... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, this is the thing. It's one of those features. When someone mentions those, you go, okay. And then you start thinking, I think, actually, wow. Yeah, this is pretty good. But the, the funny thing is, because I use the Dell XPS 15, and that has Type-C charging. But when I plug in my phone charger, which, granted, is a Samsung charger, so I think 2 amps... 5 volts or 10 watts, but I've also got a OnePlus charger, which is, I think, 15 watts or something. It gives me a notification saying not charging properly. Mm. But I remember, so I thought, okay, well, that's just fine. I need to get like a 45 watt Type-C or whatever, which can be obviously tailored down a bit to plug your phone as well. So you carry one charger and you can, you can charge everything. But I remember speaking to the Asus guy in CES and he said, actually, 
the Zephyrus G, uh, G14 he was referring to saying it's got type C charge and so you can use your phone charger. And I said, hold on, but you can't use your phone charger, can't, can you? Because Windows gives you an issue. And he said, no, Windows might throw up that error, but it still does charge. Mm. And, and what he means by charge is that the power depletes at a slower rate because yes. you are putting some power in. You're helping so it. No, exactly. It's, it's almost like an analogous to when you have wind turbines plugged into the power grid. It's it's uh, so you get a whole different amount. Well, how much load have you got coming in? After all, they don't know how much juice is going to come out of the thing you're plugging into Type C. There's all manner of things you can plug into Type C. Yeah. So, um, frankly, it, I think it's almost miraculous it works at all. And you have to even ask the question: if you plug your device into the Type C port, depending on whether you're on mains as well, do you want to use the Type C to charge your battery bank, or are you using the battery bank to power the laptop? Which which yes. ways did you see them flowing? Okay, that's a good um, point. Uh, you know, when you're plugging in peripherals, are they being powered by the thing? It's like questions that didn't arise a year ago, actually. Yeah, but I think two years ago didn't didn't even give it a thought. If it's going into a USB port, you're running it off the device. End yeah. of story. Type now, C is still yeah. one of my favorite features in the past few years. I think it's absolutely superb. The whole, the whole USB Type C and power delivery ecosystem, especially with, with the kind of the combination of Thunderbolt in there, mm -hmm. I think it's really good. I guess. In fact, um, in fact, I'll give you a chance. I'll throw you a bone on this one. So the GS66 Stealth, one of the features that I barely touched on, but mentioned, someone commented on. So I'll let you pick up the ball on this one. Is that the GS65 Stealth had a mini display port on one side and a USB C on the other plus the various other ports. The okay. 66 Stealth has a Type-C both sides, one of which supports DP. Only one supports DP. Yes. And I don't know how you're meant to know which one it is. Wait, what? Well, <laughs> usually you'd get kind of, you would get the, the funny D symbol oh, for yeah, display yeah, no, 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 I appreciate that. But what I'm saying is, but apart from peering down and looking at the thing going, hey, what's going on here then? I mean, physically, how big is a Type-C? And the problem is, Small. They, all, yeah. they all look the blooming same. Yeah, they do, um, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, which is kind of the thing. And I had this discussion with someone a while ago about how on earth do you know what a particular port supports? It's Type-C, but is it Type-C Thunderbolt? It's very, Does it support very port? confusing. Does it I mean, how much juice can you get from one of those ports in an ideal world and power a monitor? Well, I think USB power delivery is in the specification. When I looked at it a while back, it was I think it was uh, 20 volts, 5 amps, up to 100 watts. But I think typically on laptops, kind of high-end laptops, are typically up to about 65 watts Type-C mm. power delivery. So, yeah, you're right. You could power a pretty decent monitor. And we see some of those portable monitors mm. that are Type-C single cable because, obviously, you're splitting the power, the uh, data for the USB, mm. and also the display signal because it's split in three different streams, if you like. Mm. But to have, but it's it's very very confusing. So again, you kind of, it's just good because this is perfect time to talk about it with with all the laptop side of things going on. But it's very confusing because if you've got Type C, which is Thunderbolt, that is also different to Type C, which is USB, which carries Display Port, because mm. you've got uh, MST, which is multi stream. Oh yes. T, multi stream. Can't remember the T stands for transmission. Is it, I think is the T. I can't remember is transmission or technology. Um, so, but yes, yes, something like that. And, and that can, again, that kind of depends on, okay, so where is your Thunderbolt display link wired? Is it wired mm. to the, the DGPU? Is it wired to the Intel iGPU? Can mm. you therefore support two displays via multi-stream technology? And I think Ice Lake, which obviously has been out for a while now, I think Ice Lake is... is <laughs> no, it hasn't. As I said to you before, Ice Lake's a rounding error. It doesn't exist. I, no, 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 no. Wait, ah, here you we can go. buy it, but okay. it doesn't exist. Yeah, speaking of Ice Lake, I've got this. This is a Razer Blade... Uh, I think it's the Razer Blade 13, so I'm uh, going to be doing some testing on this soon. Interesting oh, that scene. I saw at IFA in Berlin, didn't I? And we saw, did we see it also at the Science Museum? I saw it at IFA anyway. Uh, IFA looked really good, and they had versions that were pure Intel and also with add-in NVIDIA, as I recall. That's right. So this, hold on. Yeah, so that's the 1065G7 pure Intel version, and I'm really mm. keen to see how that performs against AMD's upcoming Ryzen 4000U series, which is a kind of another point we'll discuss in a bit more mm. detail. But the reason I'm going to throw you, I'll throw you one more bone actually before we finish this section. The other thing I've raged <laughs> going back to Comet Lake H. Um, apparently, the new Comet Lake H 10th Gen supports Thunderbolt. Discuss. Well, is this the same as how was it 10th gen high end desktop supported 2.5 gig Ethernet or 5 gig Ethernet? And what that meant is that they have PCIe lens. It's like, gee, thanks, guys. 
like, I can't remember the last CPU that didn't have PCIe lens. Yes, so, yes. yes, okay. That's Except really... they were saying that the Comet Lake H apparently can support two Thunderbolt 3 controllers, whereas a, yes. which implies that ninth gen could only support one controller, which is like, so, why is that? It's not specifically that it supports Thunderbolt, is it? it's just that this one now has more lanes as far as I'm aware. So it's up to 40 total lanes. And mm. I, I still, I, I believe that is platform lanes because I mm. really do not like the way that both Intel and AMD, in, in all fairness, combine their P CPU and chipset lanes. It just, it's confusing. But you get 40 lanes for obviously GPU, or DGPU that is, mm. uh, Thunderbolt controllers, um, uh, PCIe storage, for example. But I guess this additional... Uh, lane count now with Coffee Lake H with the platform gives you the ability to, like you say, support more Thunderbolt controllers. So I think on the talk they said actually you could get two Thunderbolt controllers yes. pretty reasonably, whereas you couldn't really do that before other than, I believe, Ice Lake, because Ice Lake has got Thunderbolt baked in, hasn't it? Baked in, and, and, and Ice Lake, um, despite my rudeness about it, because yes, I know it technically exists, but even so, the, the number of Ice Lakes out there is minimal, it supports up to four Thunderbolt connectors. And because it's baked into the CPU, it means that laptop designers can easily plonk two on either side of the chassis. Yep. Um, whereas typically you'll, you'll find, you know, your single Thunderbolt wherever, um, but obviously near the controller. So mm -hmm. Ice Lake support for Thunderbolt 3 are good. Quite clearly, it's something that should just be a thing. I mean, there are no ways about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of Thunderbolt personally. I think it's ideal on, on laptops like this, so you can get those small, thin and light laptops and then plug in an external GPU. Um, I, I just I think it's an absolutely fantastic... Or high-speed storage. I think it's a fantastic And, and did, did you like that um, Intel briefing where they're talking about there now however many lanes of PCI Express, how they were essentially implying it was a win for them over you know AMD? Uh uh, apart from the idea that Intel has a win in PCI Express at the moment, which is just like, what? But totally yes. to totally skipping over the, sorry, we're talking Gen 3 or Gen 4, you know, just let's, let's not even go there. We've got 40. It's like, yeah, yeah 40 is more yeah. than some other. Like, oh, for the love of. Yeah, I'll, I'll give Intel some credit there because, Please? yeah, no, I, I will. I will because Gen 4 on a desktop I'd say that you're keeping for a few years, I'd say Gen 4 is a smart move right now because storage is going to get faster. Graphics cards might eventually, in the next few years, require Gen 4, I mean, high-speed networking, that type of thing. Gen 4 makes a lot of sense on a desktop where you can upgrade yourself. But at the moment, Gen 3 versus Gen 4 on a laptop, I'm not sure if it's all that important, to be honest. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I totally agree. Oh, sorry to cut across. I totally agree with you there. It's just the idea that in the main, that Intel can say we've got more PCI Express than, than them and therefore, because after all, two lanes of AMD PCI Express Gen 4 is better than, you know, more lanes of slower. I mean, you, you, can chop, you, you can chop it up, you can chop it up and achieve the same end. You know, they're saying 40 lanes without you know, spelling out Gen 3, um, 40 lanes of what? It's it's just anyway, it was it was just a passing thought. It was um, because we we do need to move on to Ryzen four thousand. Yeah. And, and I, I guess just quickly again, one of the other uh, improvements was that now the support for up to one hundred and twenty eight gigs of memory and up to DDR four twenty nine thirty three megahertz. Yes. So I guess you had an interesting point, didn't you? Because you were using that MSI laptop, which was twenty nine thirty three, wasn't it? But relatively loose timings, which is no, no. Um, was it twenty nine thirty three? No, 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 no. You're you're, you're uh, mixing the two things. That was the sorry, that was the uh, Asus. Uh, yeah, that that was the Asus G fourteen uh, Ryzen laptop with thirty six hundred memory. Thirty two hundred. Thirty two hundred memory. My, thank you very much. Thirty two hundred, but slow, low uh, slack latencies. Whereas the MSI GS66 I was looking at was not 2933, it was not just 2666, okay. even though the platform supports up to 2933. So it's like you, you get in the whole realms of do you want more faster memory or do you want tighter latencies or, or indeed do you want 16 or 32 gig, which um, with the GS66 or the VEX thing, the very highest end SKUs with RTX 2080 Super, mm -hmm. according to their table, 16 gig of memory go down to RTX 2070 Super where you're obviously paying less money, 32 gigs of memory, because apparently that's the creator skew, and then drop down again down the stack to the RTX 2060s, and you're back to 16 gig of memory, because that apparently is cheaper gamers. Mm. As far uh, as I'm concerned, if I'm paying three grand to get a 2080 Super, I want 32 gigs at least. 
Yes, <laughs> not many. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just like uh, uh, and, uh, any sentence that starts with "if I'm paying three thousand pounds" and I can't quite finish that sentence. Actually. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah, but but uh, on the twenty nine thirty three, that's an improvement for uh, Comet Lake. Itch. Oh, sure. is, is is it enough? Because I mean, at this point, our Ryzen four thousand's got DDR four thirty two hundred, and it does seem like modules are moving towards that thirty two hundred mm. type speed with the uh, availability. So. I don't know. Would it have been so much to ask for thirty two hundred, knocking up a bit more? I I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, no, quite, quite. I, I think at the moment, frankly, that's um, there's such bigger questions being asked and answered that uh, that that's in the detail end of things. Okay. Ryzen four thousand. We have to do Ryzen four thousand. I reviewed Ryzen four thousand, and I was not particularly expected to do that because that was your job. Um, yes. But samples and such like went all to cock. So you didn't get your Lenovo Thin and Lights, which were AMD, AMD. So I got the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 with 8-core AMD Ryzen processor and RTX 2060 graphics. The two snags there being one is RTX 2060 graphics and two is it's a bizarre skew of processor rated at 35 watts rather than 45 watts. Mm -hmm. So I've seen the laptop. I've got a feel for Ryzen 4000 but it's not the whole thing. And I believe you're still waiting to receive your Lenovo thinner lights that are AMD, AMD. Yeah, that's correct. So what you saw was the H series Ryzen 4000. And I, and I guess, okay, if we just kind of start with Ryzen 4000, I mean, if, if you don't know by now, this is not Zen 3 as 4000 would suggest, and I still dislike AMD's naming. I understand. Because I love keeps... AMD's name. Have I mentioned that Epic is brilliant? <laughs> right, okay. I'm going to have to find some video of you saying quite the opposite because now you're intentionally winding me up. <laughs> so, so Leon is Epic name. No, so, so Ryzen 3000 on the desktop is Zen 2, except for the APU, which is Zen Plus, and Ryzen 4000 on mobile. So the Ryzen 4000 mobile APUs, which have just launched, they are also Zen 2 on the core and they're Vega for the graphics. So Seven nanometer Vega. Seven nanometer Vega, yeah. So it's an APU, so, it's an all-in-one die. It's pretty smart as far as design goes. It really is, because it's not like, like, like Leo says, it's seven nanometer Vega, which is fundamentally quite different to the previous version of Vega that we saw on the desktop, uh, obviously in the Vega 6456, which was pretty power hungry, pretty hot running, pretty inefficient, but a, a reasonably good architecture. You bring the 7 nanometer into play, and the work that AMD and TSMC have done on that process node is phenomenal. Mm. And we keep saying it, but it is absolutely phenomenal. However, it, really it also means that Ryzen 4000, the Ryzen 4000 laptops that you are supposed to have in your mitts at some point, um, I don't know when they're going on sale, actually, thinking about it. But anyway, then... I think very soon. I think yeah, it's meant to be very soon, yeah. And the, well, yeah, but they're supposed to be very soon. They said you may have had them a few weeks ago. Um, these are idea pads, aren't they? So they're down the bottom end of the, uh, the Lenovo stack. Yeah. And in terms of price, or kind of and, kind of mid range ish, I think. Uh, okay, the fair. One that we potentially get. Fine, but the thing is that the processor cores bang up to date. Uh, the way that AMD's done them and sorted out things like power management, which is just critical to a laptop, bang up to date and will seem to work really well. The graphics, on the other hand, Vega, not Navi, Vega. So yeah. even these brand new chips are, in a sense, not bang up to date. Yeah. They, they have, in the event they could snap their fingers and produce the same thing but with Navi, you'd automatically take a step forward, presumably. You, you um, would think, wouldn't you? Yes. Hmm. I think the, the key thing was, and we, we were at AMD's tech day uh, back in February, and they made it perfectly clear. When you say clear. we, you mean you. Yeah, we as in Kit Guru, I guess. So they, they made it perfectly clear that Vega was there because obviously they start work on these APUs, these big projects, many years ago. And at the time, they were going to go with Vega. It, they just didn't have the time fundamentally to fit the RDNA or the Navi architecture into the APU because it was a retrofit. Because obviously the, AMD has this approach where they have teams working simultaneously on different projects and they have kind of leapfrogging design teams, don't they? But they did make it clear that using the 7 nanometer efficient process node for Vega and having the benefit of bringing the GPU, uh, fundamentally the GPU uh, components 
on die close to the CPU components to form that APU, even things like wire length, you got a good power benefit, which fundamentally made the, the Navi, sorry, the Vega architecture perfectly reasonable from a performance and a power perspective, according to AMD. And as a proof of concept, what they've done is to prove that AMD can make chips to go in laptops. I'm going to say this here and now. I liked the G14 that I saw. I liked what I saw from AMD. The processor impressed the hell out of me. Uh, however, I am almost agog to, to announce that because the graphics could clearly be improved because they're a generation behind already, they clearly have scope for an immediate improvement, if you yes. see what I mean. Right? Now, <laughs> yeah. what I don't know is in terms of product cycles is when will, uh, and God help us if it's called Ryzen 5000, but how quickly could AMD produce the next laptop chips which use the current CPU cores and the current graphics? In other words, the bits they've already got. Um, That's a good you, question. If you see what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it muck up the numbering even worse than it's currently mucked up. But the point is they haven't got to invent anything. They've got to take all the bits they've already got, bake them into Earth design. Obviously, if it was a chip look kind of thing and they were literally you know, multi-chips, um, take out that, put that in. It's clearly not that. But in principle, why couldn't they do it in three months' time? I mean, not, I'm sure they're not going to. But yeah, I, I, I want to see that so badly. Yeah, I, I really, guess. really, really like Ryzen 4000. Really did. You're being greedy at this point because Ryzen God, 4000. God am I ever? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, massive, massive win based on what oh, we've seen huge, so far. Oh, huge, huge! And but yeah, there is I, scope for more. I want, but uh, that's, as I say, I was, I was looking at it with RTX graphics rather than. I mean, yes, I could have looked at integrated graphics. Someone said, "Why don't you benchmark the integrated?" And apart from the thing of time, it was because. If you've got RTX graphics, you're not going to use the integrated graphics unless you're crazy crackers. Perhaps if you bought, you know, you had MX200, MX300 or whatever, but it, but it wasn't. RTX 2060 are solid graphics. It, but also the cooling package was for a nominal 35 watt CPU I saw running up to 50, low 50s with graphics that are good for 65. So the cooling had to be good for 120, 130 watts. If you had a thin and light package on that cooling package, you're not getting even then a true representation because it could run a lot quicker than it would on a true thin and light. And it was a thin and light laptop. Yes. Really impressive. That G14 chassis, really, really impressive as is. Yeah, so, so make sure you head over to Leo's review of the Zephyrus G14. So it's using the Ryzen 9 4900HS, wasn't it? Which, like you say, was yeah. eight cores, 16 threads. The key difference versus the eight core desktop chips for Zen 2 is you get a lower L3 cache per core. I think, uh, or per, I think this was was it eight megabytes of total L3 cache here, whereas you get more on the desktop parts. That's the only fundamental difference, other than some of the under the hood efficiency tweaks to make it work better in a laptop environment. And we spoke to Robert Halleck at CES, didn't we? And we spoke to some of, well, I spoke to some of the uh, the engineers who were working on it behind the scenes at the AMD Tech Day. The amount of work that they put in by designing these different power states whether it's in Windows or whether it's the firmware or just wherever, these power states have a massive influence on how efficient the laptop runs. So it was, a, it was a really good example where they said, you need to understand which power state you want to, the system to be in going forward. And you, if you think about it, that's not easy because if someone's running Cinebench right now in a split second time they could open notepad and the cine bench mm. renders done and that's completely different it's mm. not easy but they said it's critical trying to judge which power state is going to be most efficient because moving from a higher power state to a lower power state you'd think ah great okay so you're moving from high power to low power because you're doing something that's not particularly intensive so therefore lower power state but it costs energy to transition to that lower power or to that different power state because you have to flush the cache, you have to write the data, you have to rewrite it, et cetera, et cetera. So it costs energy. So if you're only a short period of time in that lower power state, then you're bursting back up to a high power state. Your net energy usage is actually higher by going mm. in and out of the power states than just staying at a continuous higher power state. Very, very smart what they've done under the hood. And, and there's two things there. The first thing is I'm going to say that everything Robert Halleck said to us at CES as far as I'm aware, has come completely true. Yeah. Every, <laughs> every single way. word, really which does. is one of those things of, it's really quite 
nice to be able to report that actually and <laughs> the other thing bizarre. is yeah yeah quite um keep it up and the other thing is that's part of the reason why i'm really keen for you to get your mitts on the u series pure amd quite soon because i was as impressed as hell by what i saw with the g14 but of course it had a great big dose of nvidia in there yes. and therefore you're not quite sure of the split mm -hmm. yeah whereas so if it's point. pure amd then you know if amd's either done good stuff or if they're being helped along by nvidia or or indeed hindered by nvidia yeah who knows because i mean that that laptop which is a very thin light laptop with a 65 watt hour battery i think from memory maybe i can't remember something like that, had a 10 hour battery life five hours in pc mark 8 which is 10 in the real world that's phenomenal when you when you get a thin and light uh and it's pure AMD. I want to see what happens there. Either smaller battery, lighter laptop, or more battery. I reckon. Oh, I mean, it has to be. Yeah. Um, which is going to be right because if you, you know, laptops, you don't have to charge every day, is a whole different experience. Yeah, precisely. Or as long as you can get kind of a ten-hour workday plus commute out of it. Mm. Thank you very much. If um, anybody ever commutes ever again. <laughs> Fair point. So well, I guess seriousness. It really. It really makes you start to I mean, wonder i mean i know it's only been two weeks or whatever not even two weeks 10 days uh but you you start to think has the world changed forever and i think you know of course it hasn't that'd be stupid but all these flippant things you know sub 100 you know whatever batteries because of flying it's like what's an airplane i've forgotten um <laughs> Fair point. i can't say the same <laughs> yeah no but i think so with regards to your point of AMD plus NVIDIA versus AMD, AMD. Mm. What you saw was the 4900HS. Yep. So, so the flagship is the 4900H, 45 watt uh, configured TDP. It, it does turbo up a bit higher for periods of time, 54 watts. Uh, so the HS is actually down clocked slightly to 35 watts. But that S design spec is very important. And, and just to, to clarify as well, the U series parts, which will be... Uh, lower clock speed again they're 15 watts so clearly taking intel head on for 45 watts versus 45 watts 15 watts versus 15 watts because of course intel controls the ecosystem at this point they've got the market share so oh, he's been absolutely. quite smart uh, to just stick well, with when, the same numbers when um, nvidia announced those super chips uh i mean the news came out yesterday but they, they were briefing us a couple of, uh, very recently and someone asked a question about will um we will we see super on both you know types of uh, processor for laptops and I, uh, and I thought blimey i've only just reviewed an amd laptop and i've already forgotten amd does laptops if you see what i mean it's so ingrained that laptops run on intel which yeah. of course is exactly how intel likes it uh, yeah. and it's like stupid man walled up um it really was just like anything yeah and the, the irony being is the g14 running on nvidia graphics and it was like already with the super i've forgotten it's like often oh, so the, it's a tanker to turn around but against that AMD has got market share to capture because they're starting from zero. They have. And if we look at the HS that you reviewed, obviously, the performance is just my word. You, <laughs> you, you, you told me some of the Cinebench numbers, and my first thought was, you clown, you've done it wrong. Yes, the, the, and, and Cinebench is very difficult to get wrong. You click a button. I mean, there's, there's not a lot you can do wrong. And still, the accusations were flying. <laughs> I do apologize, Leo. I should never doubt a man no, no, of your no, no. class. Please. No, no, no. Please do, please do. But there are some tests that cocking them up, really. I mean, you almost can't. Um, yeah. Cinebench you, is one of those, I guess, yeah. Unless you run it on battery and, you know, knock the figures down. Yeah. But but no, it was... Um, yeah, so yeah. what was the Cinebench? It was it was kind of like Ryzen... Yeah, so oh. it, was, it was close to 8-core desktop ryzen 7 numbers so i think it was like ryzen 7 2700 type numbers which is a yeah, highly was, clocked was Zen plus eight it, was, it was proper it was no arguments it was just totally happy of course the question of whether you often run cinebench and laptops different question but yeah but cinebench but, is a good proxy for demanding work workloads like blender like kind of you know cad or other rendering which you could reasonably run on a laptop like and, this. and the more significant thing was that when you're running light cpu loads so 3d mark when the graphics are working hard and the cpu is barely working it's only running on one or two cores the uh the clock speed was like 4.1 gigahertz precision it, boost too fat, it, just it, was, so it good. was just it really wasn't it, it was like all these cores down there one or two right up there it really was yeah dynamic so, as anything that's an interesting comparison point to Intel because obviously Intel still has the frequency advantage with its heavily refined 14 nanometer node and 
you know, jokes aside from the 14 nanometer, the way they've refined that to optimize the frequency deserves a lot of credit. It is a very highly uh, clock speed or very highly capable node as far as frequency goes. Mm. They've still got the benefit. But obviously there's this kind of less granular compared to AMD, shall we say, where Precision Boost 2 works very much like uh, a GPU boost type technology where you kind of throw the workload and then it'll, it'll balance. It won't say, well, hold on, I've got three cores being loaded, therefore I can only go this far, or I've got one core loaded, therefore I can only go this far. It just says, here you go, this is my workload, this is how much power I want, this is my temperature, I'm just going to take all I can, rather than stick to kind of limits which are in place dependent upon cores and core counts. Yeah. Precision Boost 2, I've, I've said it on the desktop, but it's even more important on a laptop type environment, I would say. Because oh, uh, totally. When, when I, I did the launch review, didn't I, the Ryzen 7 2700X? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I told you afterwards, essentially, it was that, that overclocking, forget it, they've done it for you uh, because yeah. it's just handled. And this is just more of the same, more of the same. It's just yeah. thumb, and, thumbs up, huge. And the power efficiency is crazy because I think mm. it was, I mean, if you compare it to the 9750H, which is the real go-to Intel chip, six cores, 12 threads, mm. good clock speeds overall, depending on your cooling configuration. Mm. Certainly not cheap with the type of laptops that it comes in. So probably comparable from a price perspective to the type mm. of system you would see, such as the, the, the G14. So the type of system you'd see kind of a Ryzen 9, 4900, eight cores N2 part. And it completely whooped the 9750H, the 4900HS did. Oh. It Massively was a yep. completely different performance league. Let's talk Computex. Now, okay, this is a bit of a bizarre topic to talk. I guess we'd usually just go to Computex, deliver all the content that we can, you know, meet with the people, see all the new cool stuff and come back. But this year, because of the uh, ongoing global issues and Computex was scheduled for, I believe it was the first week of June, Computex yeah, is N now... N Meg Crossing into June, yes. Exactly. Yeah, so Computex is now a no for the first week of June, because it's in Taiwan in Southeast Asia. We know the globe has been hit by everything that's going on. Basically, it's been rescheduled to the end of September. So it's quite interesting because I guess kind of Computex is very significant because it's always used as a time for new launches. It's always used for a time for the motherboard vendors, the laptop partners, a lot of whom are based out of Taiwan. And the big CPU, GPU guys, so AMD, NVIDIA, Intel, it's a very important point in the calendar for all those companies. So I wonder if we will start to see some of the launches shifted a bit because of this. What, what, what do you think, Leo? number of things there. So the fact it falls in the middle of the year, CES is at the start of the year. The big selling period for the year tends to be sort of kicking off September for Christmas, as if any of us these days particularly care about buying things for Christmas rather than any other time of the year. But that's the way it's tended to go is uh, first week June is Computex. Uh, they announce items and they show items which typically go on sale a couple of months later, i.e. Mm -hmm. for September. And that's the run up to Christmas or in America holiday season. Yep. And that's that's the way it's gone. So shifting Computex back to September kind of mucks that up unless the products are actually ready to rock. If they're ready to rock, it might not have a dramatic impact in that sense. Computex is significant because the hardware industry is Taiwan. Obviously, a lot of manufacturing is done in, in China PRC mainland. But uh, Taiwan, China ROC is where products are designed and a lot of stuff is made. And uh, God love them, TSMC is based in Taiwan yeah. as well. So Taiwan, hugely significant. And Computex has an element of showing off, if I'm entirely frank, which is all the different manufacturers are there and they all walk around each other's booths and Azus goes, we got the biggest one again, haven't we? And ASRock's over there with a somewhat smaller booth and MSI goes, come down to us, we've got something good going on. They, they really are, they're, they're putting out their chests and they're showing off to each other. There's a lot of that that goes on, which is frankly quite funny, um, but it does mean they tend to work, the Taiwanese tend to work incredibly hard at putting on a good show. However, a massive number of visitors are from China PRC. And right now, that's, I say right now, for the rest of this year, that's a problem because Taiwan has very strict regulations about health. If I was to pick one country on this planet I'd like to be in right now, other than the UK, because that's home, it would be Taiwan. 
it's the medically the safest place to be apart from the Antarctic. It's uh, they've done a sterling job as Taiwan. And part of that is they don't mess around when it comes to health because they had problems in the past with um, previous uh, human malware. So when they previously moved uh, Computex, they, they delayed Computex, I think it was 03. So the, the snag at the moment is if you were to travel from a country that doesn't have this problem, which is where, but in a few months, at the moment you'll be sitting in a hotel room in Taiwan for either 7 or 14 days, which basically means that <laughs> you'll spend your time there in a hotel um, and then you'll go home again. Um, so uh, Computex, major importance. Now, the thing about the launches that Luke mentioned there is interesting because historically the manufacturers do a thing, but some years they don't. So we had, for example, last year we had uh, AMD. AMD, yeah. It was huge. It was uh, all X570 and we were in the run-up to um, the launch from them. Uh, so they had some big, big news. Lisa Su owned Computex. Mm -hmm. And as I recall, NVIDIA and Intel were nowhere to be seen. They were around, I mean, they, they were there, but they didn't have any big things. The point is that the manufacturers have to hang Computex on something. And because AMD had stuff, it became the X570 event. Yes, it did. Yeah, that's right. But then AMD also kind of, they actually launched, wasn't it, Navi and uh, Zen 2, uh, basically a week later. At, well, that well, that was yeah, the thing. They, they they spread their news because they yeah. knew they could. So they owned Computex the X five seventy, and they made yeah. various announcements. And then and then they went on. Was it E three? Um, yeah, I think it up. was E three. And yeah. it was just like, didn't they just have a month? I mean, they were they 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 were just taking their. Yeah, they, they were on it for a month. But this is the thing that 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 window of time in the middle of the year is incredibly important. Like you say, pushing out to September, the end of September kind of you've already passed the back to school period, which for a lot of hardware is quite an important buy-in period. You're pushing up against Black Friday, which is a very, very big and important period. And then you are getting close to, like you say, the holiday season. So it will be interesting to see how Computex changes this year. I think Computex However, always... sorry, sorry to cut across there, without, without being overly cynical or sarcastic, in 2020, the words back to school and holiday period and such like right now have no meaning whatsoever. Fair point. Uh, but, you know, I mean, hope to goodness that in a month or two or three months, things do indeed get back to that. We have to hope that after the, the traditional school university summer holidays, things do get back to it in September. Um, we really do have to, because otherwise the world is even more peculiar. But right yeah. now, those terms you're using are completely legit terms, and they have no meaning. Fair point, yeah. Uh, and that's also, sorry, sorry to cut across again, and that's <laughs> if people have jobs and incomes to pay for the stuff. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're going down a rather depressing route here. So. We are, no, we are, but, but it, the, the calendar has shifted. It, it's just bizarre. I, I don't mean to bang on and be all miserable, um, or more so than usual. <laughs> yes, but, you uh, yes, but But it, it's just, I, I've, I, I mean, I'm, I'm significantly older than you, Luke, but I've never experienced times like this. I wouldn't have guessed that, actually. <laughs> You're looking, looking good, Leo, for what, 70, 80, 80, 90? No, no, <laughs> you're looking good. Who was that? <laughs> Somebody commented on one of the videos. Um, Richard from um, uh, Foundry. Uh, D Digital Foundry, Richard yeah, Ledbetter. Fair. Led Ledbetter, thank yeah. you, Ledbetter. R Richard Ledbetter, who's done some sterling work with consoles. Richard, good good work. His work's um, superb. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, his Xbox stuff recently was, yeah. uh, was especially good. Xbox uh, Gen, uh, the Series X. But um, somebody said, uh, am I related to him? Like, <laughs> well, I'm British and I've got a similar hairstyle. We both wear specs. I'd just like to point out Richard's younger than me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Hold on, you've lost me. <laughs> No, anyway, there we go. That's just, just that. Anyway, where were we? Um, moving on. Right. No, 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 you have to wait a second. <laughs> Richard is a good guy. To be fair. Right, okay. I, th I think I'm back in the room at this point. <laughs> okay. So, did you reply to the person who said that? No, I think um, someone else from Kikuru did, however, along the lines of in a slightly sarcastic or, or got somebody replied anyway, saying something like, What? You think all Brits are related? Um, but it's a little bit like, isn't it? And you, you know, someone comes in London. Oh, sorry, you meet an American and they say, oh, hi, where are you from? From the UK. Hey, great. Do you know John from London? It's like, <laughs> no. It's his man, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. 
<laughs> oh, he got respect is due. Yeah, exactly. And in this case, it's like Richard. From, it's like no, no. And and the irony being is, as we've commented before, I mean, you and I meet each other as much as overseas as we do in the UK. Yeah. Uh, I've never met Richard in the UK. All right, okay, I've, I've met him in America at least twice and somewhere else, I think. Oh, yes, Israel, it's, isn't it, I guess? <laughs> uh, oh, yes, yes, that's right. The Israel foundry, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, wait, to, wait, wait. to round that one out about all Brits being related and Computex being delayed, uh, mm-hmm. I guess basically what we're saying is if you're oh, expecting yes. to see Computex news kind of in June, oh. then no, it's going to be end of September, early October. We can do what we can to bring you all the content we can. And it will just be interesting to see how this does adjust the launch cycle. The other, that- the other thing that's um, significant at the moment is, uh, so Taipei has a number of trade centers. They have the original World Trade Center, which is near the 101 Tower, that's right. uh, which is in the center of town. And then a few years back, they built Nangang, um, or, or rather, they built an exhibition hall in the area known as Nangang. Uh, and we only ever referred to the Nangang Exhibition Center, but that that actually became Nangang Exhibition 1 because they've built Nangang 2, which is about half the size of Nangang 1, and that was open in 2019. We didn't go to Nangang 2 because there was nothing there of any interest to us. That was more trade people, you know, things like if you're buying uh, USB dongles and things like that. It just wasn't anything to do with us, Um, and system-on-chip stuff and Internet of Things. The Computex that's been delayed until later the year they are going to put in nangang 2 so therefore by definition it must be smaller than usual and it's only running for is it three days rather than four yeah well yeah. i guess one day less now our, our, sorry our, our weeks, for, sorry, mm, sorry sorry yeah. i was, I was going to say so what it actually runs for and what realistically yes. our industry gets content for are two different things well we turned up to las vegas for ces didn't we late mm. saturday afternoon mm. And then started work, was it like 8 a.m. Sunday morning? Yes. <laughs> Which is, I regard as the stop. morning, you, you regard as the night. It's like, uh, what eight, is Yeah, 8 a.m. is still the previous night as far as, as, far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for Computex, we typically go out on the Saturday. The Sunday is meant to be an acclimatization day, except it hasn't it's been. It's just not. Last year, we, we were out to MSI's HQ on the Sunday. Uh, the Monday is the day before Computex starts, but then I spent it with Gigabyte. And it so happened that Taiwan had one of their um, uh, uh, just-in-case-China-invades drills where they sound the alarms, and if you're on the streets, you get arrested. Oh, hold on, hold on. We're going to have to redo that bit. Christ. That's what it is. That's what it is. Do you mean one of the earthquake drills? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's their, their military jobs. It's not because of earthquake. It's it's because of um, keep off the streets. It's security. Right. Okay. I, I, okay. You've educated me. I didn't realise that. Okay. No, no, no. Categorically, they take it really seriously in Taiwan. Properly, properly, properly. They genuinely do. Fair enough. Okay. I, I, and I, I want to be absolutely crystal clear here. I admire what they do hugely. Um, visiting there is absolutely brilliant. It, it yeah. slightly scares me, uh, but um, it, it definitely gives you a way uh, a view of how different systems work. But no, no, this is if you – anyway, they, they lock it down for I think it's two hours, and they mean it, like as in you get your text alerts beforehand and such like, um, and you are off the streets. And it so happened it was raining like crazy while they are doing that as well. So the, anyway, that was, that was a weird Monday, uh, but we saw Gigabyte, we did good stuff. And then it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was Computex big time. Friday's when Computex winds down, and they uh, – basically people are departing. But, so we were already wrapping up. And then Saturdays when they open Computex to the public, and you, you don't want to be near, near Nangang on Saturday. It's crazy town. Uh, so Saturday is technically the last day of Computex. But phew. So, yes, you're right. If they pack in Computex into three days and we get to see other companies for two other days, it'll be quite conventional. Yeah, because I, I guess the, the key thing is, isn't it, Computex, the show, is slightly different to Computex, kind of the, the event, if you like, yes. because obviously the companies have their own suites, their own yeah. hotel rooms, so they, they can kind of roll as they see fit, rather than stick to the specific days yeah. that the show is actually on. Same with CES. Yes, yes, I mean CES, yes, 
Yeah. Wow, that's an experience. Um, but uh, yes, Computex. Anyway, uh, and I, I suspect part of the reason that Computex uh, is going to be in Nangang Two is presumably because Nangang One is going to be doing something else. I mean, after all, they they do a lot of trade shows in Taiwan. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not just tech; it's all manner of things. So uh, presumably they'll be running shows simultaneously to try and get their schedule back on course. Mm-hmm. And Taiwan's a cool place, actually. Part of my bike is from Taiwan. Specifically, says made in Taiwan. I think it's the composite. Uh, which oh, one, okay. some, right. something, something like that. But no, I think the entire frame was made in Taiwan. So, you, you know, Taiwanese are smart. This has been Luke Hill for Kikaru. And this you. has been Virtual Leo a long way from Luke. Yes. <laughs> so we've been discussing uh, laptops, laptops, and laptops. NVIDIA, yes. Intel, AMD, all the big guns. We saw Ryzen 4000. Pretty impressed with it. Leo was very, very happy with the G14, yep. which looked like an absolutely fantastic system. NVIDIA Super looks like a bit more performance, but knocking everything down by a price tier. So hopefully that gives us a bit more performance for our money. Great. Yep. And, and Comet Lake Hitch. Yep. And in the, like near this... future, in the near future, we are going to have to discuss Comet Lake S and also, I think, consoles. So that's going to be unavoidable, which is yes. going to be more Intel and more AMD. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, not NVIDIA with those two points, but I guess no. NVIDIA is kind of doing what it's doing and doing it pretty well, in all fairness to them, actually. Comet Lake H on laptops, we're keen to see those. Hopefully we'll see them in a few weeks. When they go on sale, we don't know, but we'd be keen to see what Intel can bring to the fight versus Ryzen 4000, because it looks like they're going to have quite a tough challenge, but never count out Intel. They've got really good frequency uh, capability on their and 14 I cannot plus, wait plus, 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 plus. See, I cannot wait to see a figure north of 5 gigahertz, even if it's just momentary. And if it truly hits 5.3 gigahertz on a laptop chip, I'll be amazed. <laughs> Right, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make up some uh, irrational bet to make you do something if it doesn't. No, 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 no. I wasn't making any offers there. I, I mean, I will be oh, amazed. No. It's a reasonable thing to say. Yep. So stay tuned. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Let us know what we can do better. What you liked about this? If you want to see more, let us know some other topics you'd like us to discuss. We're gonna try and do a bit more of this while everybody's kind of on lockdown and yep. bring you a bit more content. And signing out, I've been. Luke Hill for Kikaru. And I'm Virtual Leo. Make sure you like, subscribe, check the main Kikaru website, help us out on Patreon, and visit our cool merch store. See you next time. Give us a wave, Leo. A royal wave. Yeah, that's right. Oh, sorry, I had to do it there. The camera's just there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is like a, a music video of washing the car. Oh, no, that's an unpleasant thought. I'm signing off now. We're done.